Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, this video has been a difficult process because every time we have some major tech, tech yeah, like that, technical difficulties. Yeah, for some reason. Crap. So, all right, either way. Anyway, welcome to the Surplus Boys channel. We are the Surplus Boys. Yes, indeed we are. We are Senor Patrick, Senor Nick, and we have Senor Dos, two guns this time. Yes. Because we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to compare. And you will notice something. The Toker is on my side. Whoa. And 1911's on his. Holy crap. Like, no. Yeah, that's, that, does, uh, that doesn't work. This is Patrick's gun. That's my yeah, gun. That's his gun. So, but so, usually what we do in our free time, actually, the main concept of the whole reason this boys, channel, this idea started is comparing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's comparing guns to each other. Yeah. Guns that in some way shouldn't even be compared to each other. Pretty much. You'll see that in, up, in upcoming videos. Trust me. Yeah. But um, for these guys, they're they actually they're relatively closely related. You'd be like, wait a minute. Y'all wrong. No, kind of were right because the Tokarev is technically a copy of the 1911. Not more or less an aesthetic. That's more to the 1903 yeah. uh, Colt Hammerless. But the internals and everything was pretty much taken yeah. from this. And unlike the Tokarev, the 1911 was designed by John Moses Browning. John Moses Browning saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there were semi-automatic handguns, and there were semi-automatic shotguns. The sixth day. Primers, 131. So, comparing these two guns, pretty much what we're going to do, we're kind of just going to go over some of the small things. Not really going to go over history. We've already done Those that. Those are what the full-length videos yeah, are for. Yeah, full-length videos. On just to get this out of the way now. This yeah. is the first comparison. There will always be full-length videos on everything we're talking about separately that yeah. you can go back and watch the history yeah. of. Insert there, insert there, Yeah, whatever. so you'll be able to... We say we're going to keep this video short. It's still probably going to be 15 minutes long. But, um, <laughs> honestly, probably will. But... You can always watch the history of the gun in a separate video. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's relatively not great history because we're not historians. But anyway. Or claim to be historians. Yeah. I mean, we try our best. Yeah. Eh, whatever. <laughs> try to spew out as much as we can. Yeah. Anyway, so for these two guns, the 1911, an American handgun, the Tokarev, at least mine is Romanian. So then with that, pretty much the two major differences is the size and cartridge Um on yeah. these and comparing like if you were to grab each one so i guess i'll go to my gun from from over here but pretty much the tokarev shoots a 7.62 by 25 millimeter round that is an 85 grain projectile going about 1300 feet per second it's very zippy um it holds eight rounds in a single stack magazine and Overall weight, it's it's pretty all right for a full size handgun. Um, I know it's definitely it's, it's lighter. Surprised. It's light. Yeah. I, I actually, if if I had to carry that all day, I would in some ways probably take that over an yeah. yeah, because it's, it's, it's lighter. Yeah, it's less weight. Also, you do get one more round, but in, in technicality, seven six two. If um, you could make this in forty five, I'd buy it. Then you just have this. It, but cooler because it's not American. I, can, all right, yeah, I don't true. want one in nine millimeter. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the small side note with Tokarev in nine millimeter, I do because now I'm on a quest to collect Yugoslavian guns. I don't know why, but I would buy a Yugo one in nine millimeter. Yeah, true, true. We don't own yeah. anything in nine millimeter, so we no, know nothing no, we, about that no, cartridge. No, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, so with that, and then I'll let you, you do your gun. So uh, 1911's <laughs> Rock Island is new. Um, 45 ACP is a 230 grain bullet moving at like 830 feet per second. It's slow. Mm. It's not fast. It's hard though. It's, you know, it's that dude who says he has like a, you know, fast Camaro. But it's like, you know, it's a, a, it's a mullet era Camaro. It's a mullet. Oh, a, th a 305. It's an, it's an IROC with a, not an IROC, but it's that era Camaro oh, with a 305. Sad 305 yeah, noises. That is what 45 ACP <laughs> is. Your Tokarev <laughs> round is like the guy who thinks he has a fast Subaru. Yeah, so <laughs> man, pretty much it's a good comparison if you're into cars. And yeah, and crap we like also that. like cars. Yeah, um, so but either way, the 1911 seven rounds, 45 ACP. You can get eight round mags for them. Yeah. I don't have any with you me. Know, so, yeah, that's the thing too. Um, you can't get extended mags. For yeah, these. more or less. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? But they make 15 round mags for these. I never. Want yeah, one. there's a lot more. At least for this specific model, there's not as much customability. 
Well, there is. Work. You can you can put modern sights on it. You can do a bunch of stuff to yeah, it. But I bought a can, GI model because I wanted a GI yeah, model. Yeah, you can get different mags. Obviously, there's a, a lot of different companies that make this You can put different slides gun. on that gun. It, it's yeah. the same concept as a Glock, and I hate saying that, but it is. You can put... It's even the same concept as an AR. You can put whatever accessory that, that you want on there, minus a light because it doesn't have a rail. Yeah. You unless, know. unless you change the frame. But or, then well, at they that make point, mounts. you're getting... They they make, make mounts. Yeah, you're getting a whole new gun at that yeah, point. Yeah, at that right? point, it's a new serial number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with the Tokarev, you can't really do that. That, um, that no. really isn't... At least I for, mean, there's some options, but not I, many. I, I don't know. I don't really know too much on the... I guess you would not say aftermarket, know. but... Nah, it could be the aftermarket. But, yeah, Because you got to think, the Chinese has... They didn't just make... What was there? The type whatever... Type um, 56 or something? I don't, I don't Everything's know. type 56. Type, type whatever. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll put stuff. it up here somewhere. <laughs> um, they didn't just make military tokerovs. They made they didn't, like they made th- civilian market tokerovs. Yeah, I think so. Because you, you've, I don't know. We've all seen tokerovs that are nickeled. They're ugly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The, come the bougie on. ones. So basically, what I'm going to say now is is give us the abridged version of why your gun was cheap. I paid 500 bucks for that. It's brand new. It's yeah. brand new. His was used. So. For my gun, when I got my gun, I got it during COVID. Um, and I think it I was, said already we bought both of these guns during COVID. I think so. Well, now, Either you, way. now you know. Yeah, yeah now, you, now you know. <laughs> like, we bought both of these in, like, the beginning of COVID. Yeah, pretty much. So my gun was way cheaper than any other Toker I saw at the time. Of course, me being a guy who has no money, I was like, cool, I'll get the cheapest one I can. Blue Collar American. Yes. And that became a problem. So <laughs> this gun had some pretty glaring issues mm. with loading and things like that. So pretty much the safety that they put on these when they came into the country, it was messing with the trigger. So when you would go to fire it, the safety would go on. And then when you go to turn the safety off, it would not fire. Kind of a little dangerous at that point because you don't know what the gun's doing. And then pretty much it had had some burrs and things like that I had to change. And I got that fixed and also had a bit of loading issue. It was not going full battery. You just had to tap the back of the slide. It'd go in, yeah. Yeah, and then it'll go in. Um, That just required a little bit of massaging to the ramp. Um, and then that's about it. I haven't had any issues since. No, that's pretty reliable. Um, but yeah, so if you're going to get the cheapest one out of a surplus gun, expe- but, it, but it's a surplus issue. gun though. You're yeah, taking a gamble issue. no matter what. Even if even yeah. if you pay, I paid fourteen hundred bucks for my M1. You're still taking a gamble yeah, even at that money. It's all surplus. It's guns. old. They're it's, old. It's part <laughs> of what it is. Yeah. So you know? that's yeah. That's the abridged version on that. And yeah, that's pretty yeah, much it. So I'm now in, now we'll fondle each other's guns. Yeah. Yeah. So um, oh, and they're already it's already right in front of me. Look at that. Exactly. Look at that. And then so, there is no danger beans. No, these are both clear. Nope. Danger beans. Anyway. Somebody will get mad that we just got Ah. Uh, oh, oh, uh, who is it? The, the guy from, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Wilson Combat? What's his name? Oh, that guy. Oh, if you ever see this video, which you never will, you're going to get mad at me because I just dry fired that. I don't Wait, wait. Care. You're going to get even more mad <laughs> because for some reason, doing that is bad for your handgun. Well, then I won't just shoot it at that point. God, I hate people. Either way. Fud lore. <laughs> hashtag. Yeah, hashtag fud lore. Yeah, fud lore. Whatever. I'll put some silly portion in that. Exactly. Anyway, now fondling the gun. If you follow Mike B, he's got a funny shirt that says, only steel on my hip. <laughs> <laughs> so That is Mike's military and not affiliated with him. Good guy. Go watch him. Don't know him. Just watch him. Yeah. Now fondling these bad boys. Yeah. So uh, I'll let you go first. Right off the bat. Um... I don't say my hands are bigger than most people's, but... Oh. They're, me- they're meaty. Yeah. He has some meaty paws. Ladies, let us know the average hand size. Saying you lie about the average, you know what. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't need that to be <laughs> bleeped out. Um, so, this gun is smaller than 1911 this way. Um, I don't mind it. It's comfortable, actually. Yeah. Um, in some ways, I actually like this over the 1911 because I don't have to pre- depress it grip safety down. Yeah, there is that. Um, which, but that comes second nature to me because I shoot that thing all the time. Yeah, you know, true. this, yeah, you, you don't have to worry about it. If you get it. used to it, you get used to it. That's exactly. Much it. I, there's, there's not much I hate about this gun. So I think it's comfortable. I like that you can reach all the controls. Like, you know, unlike this magazine's unloaded. Unlike the 1911 where like, you know, I can hit the mag- the, yeah, the that, slide that, release. That is true. Yeah, I just realized that. Yeah, this is... I mean, you got to change your grip to do that. Also, depends on your hand. You do have to reach a bit. Even my hand, I have to reach uh, a bit to do that. To reach the slide release. The um, safety on this, there well, there really is no safety. No, There's the only, only safety ha- on this is half cock. It's supposed to be a half cock notch. Um, yeah. I mean, mag release, yeah, mag release is... Basically the same. Basically. 
That is harder to push, and it's a little that, smaller. And that's also checkered, which I think makes it easier. Yeah, you that know? is one thing. I noticed some mags in that. Yeah, because like they're yeah, a some little mags, tough to get yeah. out. Like this one, you got you got to push hard. You got really got to push yeah, hard. Yeah, and that. like okay, so like I don't have to change my grip to drop the slide, but you have to change your grip to take the mag out. Yeah, that's but one, on I, the nineteen eleven. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, with this, you know, you don't. You just move your thumb and mag. Yeah, and that's it that's falls. easy. So aside from that. I mean, we're going to get into, like, like what would we change and stuff. But, like, aside from that, there's not much about this gun I don't like. Um, I do wish the lanyard loop was on the bottom, not on the side. But that's just me. Small preferences here. Yeah, it's a small preference. Sights, I don't mind. I like that they're higher off the barrel compared to the 1911. But I think yeah. the 1911 have better sights for accuracy. Yeah, I would think so. I, I mean, also for a handgun... You're not really shooting. Yeah, we both suck with handguns. Yeah, we're not so. great at I don't, it, I don't know what we're talking we're, about we're here. Not really, for a handgun in most cases, you're not shooting more than past mostly 25 yards. Maybe, maybe 40 yards at the most. Yeah, at the most. If 50's um, pushing it. This is it's more for self-defense. That's the idea of a handgun. So these kind of more wider sights. Um, also, one thing that we didn't really talk on uh, yet is since this is parkerized, Oh, the sights blend right in. They blend, they blend right in, but there actually is no glare. That is true. With this being slide. not parkerized, or yeah, is that, this blue? That is blue. Yes, that is a, like a, a really dark blue. There, there is a glare. There is a glare on that. Yeah, so. I agree. This isn't really a fair comparison, but I'm going to say it because I can. Um, it's like you threw a handful of sand into this gun every time you pull the slide back. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That I mean, that makes sense. Also, it is mentioned in the Tokarev video. That is made of two guns. Yes. That is not one singular gun. So the slide is actually a different serial number than the frame. Yeah, that's probably not and helping it. I've actually taken that apart. I don't think you've actually ever seen it fully apart, fully apart, and actually looked deep into it. Um, yeah. There are some things in there that definitely look pretty rough. It was made in a factory um, that was probably... Communist satellite yeah, state. Yeah, that wasn't trying to if make that's them, all i have to say yeah it wasn't trying to make them for a commercial market where no. it needed to be nice they it's, just needed to do what they do yeah which is go pew make this gun so we can give it to either a military personnel or, or, a, police or a police officer that was it so um, that was the idea so that's why obviously soviet bloc it's gonna be they're always gritty yeah a little gritty so what do you got on the 1911 now that i've done my spiel <sighs> on a um, gun that i barely know so for 1911 i mean what's more america John Moses Browning. What is more amazing than a 1911? Screw all you guys that like clocks. No, anyway, no, there is one gun that's more amazing than the 1911. I mean, there is, but when it comes to and like the single action when, army, <laughs> which true, is also a cult design. True, true. <laughs> Anything that's a cult design, really, in all honesty. Uh, the, even uh, even some really stupid ones. Yeah. I like. I'm a little biased. I like. I'm the a cult guy. I like the Colt Lightning. That's a cool gun. Yeah, it's a cool gun. Anyway, Colt Lightning's cool. Colt we're, Python. We're going Colt, Colt oh, Python. Big Python. Anyway, getting back to this guy. So it's nice. I mean, the grip angle on this is a little bit more slope. It's a little better than the Toker in my opinion. Oh, I'm gonna fail on that. Um, you're not gonna have hammer bite on this guy because the oh you can still beat, get it you can still get it but yeah. it's not it's easy on that actually yeah. if you that try. has a world war ii and this is mentioned in the video yeah that's got an a1 style grip safety so it's got a little bit of an extension on it the a1 or the Original. 1911 beaver tails aren't as long yeah yeah and, and I, people were getting hammer bites so they extended it yeah and i mean if you realistically this goes into the interchangeability i guess with this gun is you can buy like a modern extended beaver tail if you wanted to for this if you really were getting hammer bite with this which is you're probably holding it wrong. Um, you can get an extended, you know, beaver tail. And you can get a different hammer. You can put a commander-style hammer in there. Yeah. Um, instead of the standard, I guess that's called a spur-style hammer. Yeah, it's a spur. Yeah. So, so, but with this, pretty nice. 45 ACP. Pretty nice. You feel it. It kicks. Yeah. That gun gets dirty. Like, you ever notice the front of that gets dirty? Really yeah, quickly? it did. Yeah, yeah, it just does get dirty. I don't think that gets as dirty. I don't know why that gets dirty, unless it's just because the 45 ACP I shoot is cheap. Could be. Which I mean, even, but it, I, I also shoot surplus crap out of that gun. And I grease that thing. I don't oil yeah. it. I I clean it the way the U.S. military wants you to clean it, stated in the field manual. Yeah. So, but it, it gets dirty up front quite a bit, actually. Yeah. yeah. But I guess with that, I mean, that kind of covers most of the stuff yeah. on it. I guess we can go to our uh, Yeah, go to the now. questions now. So the questions that we like to ask ourselves in some of these comparisons. We've added a new one to this, by the way. Yeah, yeah. We Well, I mean, this is the first one they're seeing. So yeah. It's, well, in it's our, in, in us, we've added a new one. <laughs> 
So we've, we've gotten rid of one, which is the, would you use this for home defense? Obviously, I'd use my 1911. He's questionable on using that. He has other guns to choose from. Yes. So... Um, and we... Do you want to just start with that one? I mean, we, uh, yeah. So what... The main question that we're going to ask pretty much ourselves, uh, and well, maybe not you guys, unless you guys want to actually... Like, Leave it in the comments. Comment yeah. or something like that. We'd like to hear. Thanks. And is that, what would you change about each of these guns? Yeah. So... We'll let Patrick go first. So, we're talking about our own guns, right? Or are we talking both about... Of them, both of them. Might as well, because we have All guns. All right, so, for the Tokarev, if I were to change one thing, I would... I got two things for the Tokarev. And one of them... Well, they're both never going to happen. So, one of them being, I wish they put an actual, like, you know... Little, beaver tail? Little beaver tail on the back for the hammer. But that's very much the 1903 pocket... Yeah, 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 pocket, pocket, pocket yeah. hammer. Oh, the 1903. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the, the, pocket, yeah, yeah. the Colt 1903 or the FN 1903. Yeah, that's very much that style with the shrouded hammer, which I'm not a big fan of anyway. But there's that. The other thing I would change is I wish they copied the thumb safety, personally, that, that's, instead of a half cock. That, that's pretty valid. Yeah, I wish they copied the thumb safety over the, over the half cock. Um, I mean, obviously, after they got rid of this, they went to the... Makarov, which has a safety and decocker and everything. Yeah. But that that would be my two things. Aside from that, the cartridge is weird and unique enough, but still available enough that it, I like yeah, it. Yeah, it is very... Right now, it's actually extremely available. When I yeah. first got the gun, it was not. Yeah, so... Because so, I think... I think, well, COVID. Um, yeah, I do true. like it. It has eight rounds. But that, that'd be the only two things, realistically, I'd change. I mean, I like it. The recoil impulse isn't bad. The triggers, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's whatever. Exactly. So, on the 1911... Uh, there's not a lot I'd change on that. <laughs> John Moses Browning did his homework. Yeah. Um, huh. If there's one thing I'd change on the 1911, get rid of the half cock. It's not needed. You're really going to need the half cock with a thumb safety and a grip safety. Yeah, that's a lot of safety. Yeah. Um, and I get it. The Army probably wanted it, honestly. I mean, that's probably when going from the previous um with side revolvers arm. and stuff yeah the yeah. sidearm they had a half cock they didn't have a normal safety safety yeah so they were like well you need this in here anyway because that's what we're used to yeah so man, and like in the case of like copies of this gun the argentine i think baluster molina doesn't even have a grip safety and in some ways you don't need a grip safety on this gun the thumb safety would be enough yeah. like there's guns that just have thumb safeties and it's enough you know so that that's really all all i, I magazines easier to clean standard gi magazines easier to take apart that's it that's yeah. all i got yeah and then uh, for me a little difficult um i guess i'll go from the 1911 to the tokarev um 1911 well i don't shoot patrick's gun that often so but i guess looking at it i don't know i mean i know the one thing you'd change it's pretty crispy all the way around let yeah. me tell you um one thing though at least if you're gonna get I mean, you can with the modern one, but I don't want a modern one, really. Um, I want a reproduction of an older style one. Is change the sides just a little bit. Yeah, make them a little bit higher. Make them a pinch higher and, like, whatever the most oldest school tritium. type of tritium night sight. The stuff that these, makes you sick. Yeah, the stuff that the stuff that gives you radiation. <laughs> yeah, radium girls. So <laughs> that's the two things I would really change on this. Everything else, though, feels really nice. Um I don't seven rounds. I'm fine with seven rounds. Um, yeah, I'm fine with it too. I'm I know a, there's people that are gonna be like, yeah. you need more than seven rounds to get work done. Now, if you can't kill somebody, YouTube's not gonna like that. If you can't mate unalive somebody in seven rounds who's coming into your house, you should more so. Pardon me. Reevaluate yourself. Yeah. I mean, you can get into the argument that you need a bunch in case there's more than one person. Whatever. We're not getting into that. Yeah, we're not. We're not getting into that. But. <laughs> so, and then also, I'm a big revolver dude. I prefer revolvers, actually. So you're already over. limiting yourself to six. I'm already, yeah, already at six. Yeah. Unless I have a Nagant, which has seven. Yeah, you're already, you're already at a disadvantage. But if those people are coming into your house, you, they probably have a Glock, let's face yeah, it. Yeah. Not already, stereotype, but they probably have a Glock. They probably oh, have... Oh, wait, or a Yeet Cannon. Or a Yeet Cannon. Or a Yeet Cannon. And they hold what? In Jersey, it'll be 10 rounds, yeah, but everywhere ten. else, well, it's between well, 13 and 15. Well, if you're committing a crime in New Jersey, you might as well get a, whatever the biggest... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather just get the felony at that point. Yeah, that's, um, that's, what, that's what criminals do. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so, we're not going to get into politics, but anyway. No, but, like, you're already at a disadvantage, but look at the bright side. At least that person's going to know you hit them. Yeah, true. It is, uh... <laughs> it's, it's like the idea of you're getting hit by a sledgehammer... 
and we're gonna take this comparison. You that's gonna, like getting hit with the tiniest of ball peens. Yeah, it's a ball. I mean, that's like what they hit your knee with. But you got you got to think about it though. A sledgehammer is one big, huge blunt a blunt force. A ball peen, a ball, all the force goes in that little tiny tip. The bright side and, is, but yeah, it's tip. yeah, tip. Just tip. <laughs> the bright side is both of these guns can be thrown at your opponent. Yes, they are made of steel. <laughs> they are heavy, and they probably won't break. Maybe an, a small internal piece might break when it hits the ground. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but these were designed to be military guns where that was going to happen. Exactly. So that is a good thing about them. So, Which, yeah, that's the, uh, that's that's the new question. Yeah, let's, that, let's continue. So <laughs> for my Tokarev, the things I would change on this guy. You're like me. You don't know what to even choose. Because on the 1911, yeah, I mean, it's like I, it's hard. I mean, I know this gun, and I know it's little crappy portions about it. I don't. Know. I would obviously change the stupid. Like, if, if you could get rid of that safety without putting a hole I don't in even. The frame. I don't even need a normal safety. And I mean, in we're gonna go into more whatever blah 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 bull crap about how you carry your gun. I don't carry this anyway. In Russian and most European countries, I think during the time I could be wrong. They actually didn't have these necessarily loaded, depending yeah. on, I guess, on the scenario. Also, if you're like, a police officer, I don't think it's loaded. You actually have to cock it to, yeah. be, to be in action. I think maybe in military forms, uh, especially during World War II, officers and stuff like that, they just... Also, like, side going. note, those weren't issued to every soldier. Like, And a 1911 yeah. wasn't issued to every soldier either, but, like, most airborne troopers had them. Most Marines had them. Um, but... Like, the 1911 was widely issued. That was, like, officers. Yeah, so if, if we're speaking about World War II, which is also going to kind of segue into our next question. Um, but I wait. Well, let me let me get back. So, yes, I will change the safety. That's about it on this gun, really. Everything else is okay. I'm perfectly fine with. Um, is there better options? Yes. But we're going to go next into the next question of, would we use this for the time period it was being used for? So we're Which... the main thing is this was designed in... Um, you know, 1911. Well, it was designed before. So this has two wars by the time this, this thing has one yeah, war. Yeah, this has two wars. This only has one war. So we're going to stick with World War Two. Yeah, just to make it easy. So would I, you know, use this? I mean, for the pistols at the time, especially if I was in um, Europe the, on the Eastern Front, this the only real pistols you're going to be finding are revolvers of all varying sizes, especially if you're an officer in the Soviet yeah. military. Lugers. Yeah, there's Lugers. P38. I mean, you could grab them. You, uh, uh, P38 might not be as common, actually. Uh, Walter PPs, Walter PPKs. Yeah, so those... You know, stuff like that. Or even, like, around. private purchase guns if you're talking about German stuff. Yeah. Um, C96 was was big in a bunch of places. There, It's a little dated at that point, though. Yeah. So, but with this, um, if you were a Soviet officer, they were very strict on what guns you had. Um, picking up other guns was kind of frowned upon. Uh, in the in military aspect, especially if you're a part of the main army, the one thing is, if you're an officer, and you were lucky to get this. Usually got an Nagant revolver. Yes, you still got the seven shot gas seal yeah. Nagant revolver. Fun fact: the only revolver you can suppress though, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so um, that is that was a thing. That's already an advantage but, at that point. Yeah, so mostly people who I don't I mean I don't know too much, but people that got these. They're lucky to get these. Um, they're mostly more higher ranking um, field officers and stuff like yeah. that. I take that over a Luger. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I mean, a, well, a PA08 Luger. It's also it's a, it's kind of like, I mean this necessarily it's it's dated at about that point. And then there's a better option. There's the P38. The, oh yeah, 100 so, percent better option is P38. But um, yes, I would I would if I was in the Eastern Front, I'd yeah. use this. This is a pretty good option. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, and then um. The 1911, well, that's... So the 1911 gets a little bit weirder because I have a front... Uh, I have two other realms of combat that you don't, which is Italy and the Pacific. True. Um, yes. So in Italy, you have the Beretta... What was that? Well, there's a, there's a few... There's a lot of them. Well, like uh, the, the, com the common one was the Beretta handgun, which is I can't it, think of. I think it was 34. I think so. You probably would fall, find... Uh, we'll get there eventually. What are the World War World War One revolvers? The uh, Badeos? Well, there's the Badeos. You'd probably there, find there's that. There's the Beretta 1915s. There's probably yeah. some Glacenti sticking around. Um, in Japan, you have two options. Uh, a Nambu that you can shoot yourself with because the sear's on the outside. Or the... I think it's Type 14, which is... A, yeah, which is a copy of the Luger, essentially. Yeah. Kinda. Not really. Um... If we're talking about those two specific theaters of combat first, which we are, 
Um, I would still take the 1911 because the Beretta is going to be a nine millimeter. Yeah, yes. we've already stated that I just don't like nine millimeter. Um, and eight millimeter Nambu is less effective than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very light, kind of in the realm of I think it's top, like it's like 32 ACP. It, pretty it's close. really kind yep. of it. You know what? Never shot you it. You know what? I would still take this now. You have to cut out so much of this. Yeah, if you want to talk about Germans, I'm still just going to take this yeah. 45 ACP. It's Basically, the only thing that I would take over this, there's two guns. It would be an original a Webley from World War One and 455. That'd be pretty badass. Um, or a Colt model 1917, which is a revolver in 45 ACP. True. So same cartridge, just as a revolver. Yeah, so. just, as a, just as a revolver. Aside from that, I this is the gun I'd go to in World War II. So. What about a Steyr? Huh? Now we're rambling. Yeah, now we're rambling. All right, we're just going to cut the video here um, because we're going to keep going if you don't stop This us. video will be, be an hour long. So I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. Um, and we have another video we got to shoot today. So yeah, pretty so much that's like, our... comment, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, that's... Do all that fun algorithm stuff that yeah. they... I mean, I guess it's... I don't know, whatever. Who cares? Please stick around. We have more stuff. Um, I'm going to try to we have edit some, this and get this stuff out quick. But we'll We see. have some very interesting guns. Yeah, we have very interesting things to get stuff, into. Stuff that there's not a lot of videos on on YouTube. Yeah. And stuff that there's a lot of videos on. Yeah, well, well but we're, we're, we're trying. So anyway, thanks for showing up. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nope.